Well, what is going on guys and welcome into the video. So let's talk about a mistake that I made that was so bad, so egregious that I had to sell the stock. But wait, it gets even worse. I knew better and still made the mistake. So it's not like it was something out of nowhere or short seller attack or anything else like that. I simply screwed up and had to sell. So I will give you all the details about this and I just asked in exchange for you to gently tap that like button and consider subscribing too. It's super easy to do if you like the truth without the hype. Now stick around with me on this one because the why and the mistake made is one that everyone is susceptible to and I will tell you how to avoid it too. Don't worry about that guys. I'll give you the whole story and everything to do. And I mean, honestly, it's hard to avoid because even after 20 plus years of doing this, having made this mistake before actually and having a rule against this mistake, I still made the mistake. So it's not easy to avoid even for old dogs in this game like me. So I will give you some strategies on that too. So the stock that I sold completely out of would be Sarepta stock. And yes, guys, I know I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but let's talk about why I bought it, why it was a mistake, how I actually managed to make 16% on a mistake and what I'm doing now about it. So for context here, I bought this stock after a short seller report dropped the stock big time, as you can see right here in this chart right there. One of my basic, I call it classic swing trading moves, I like to make in hot markets. Now to be clear, I don't swing trade often and I'm not a traditional swing trader or anything like that, but I'm especially not going to swing trade in this type of market we are currently in right now. I'm not even looking for swing trades in this type of market. And even if I saw the perfect opportunity, I still would probably not pull the trigger during times like this right now because swing trading is not really what I do. As we have seen time and time again in this market, even earnings beats can earn you a massive beat down instead of the stock soaring. We have all been left shaking our heads at some of the moves in our stocks after a great earnings call. Now, yes, it means a great opportunity too, and you can just add more, but it makes for a very dangerous environment to swing trade in my opinion, and requires more skill than I have. So obviously when I don't have the skill, I'm not going to do it. Now in a bull market like we had when I bought this stock, huge moves down are very rare and usually come after a short seller report or attack or something like that which as we all know, they're usually made up or based on very loose facts in the first place, if any facts at all. So when they happen in a big run, the stock drops big. And then after the noise kind of dies down or the report is completely debunked, the stock basically rockets back up again, which, you know, of course, to me seems like a great swing trade opportunity. So although the setup was perfect for Sarita, why was it a mistake and what did I screw up? I mean, during that time, we were in a ridiculous bull run. The report was untrue. Eh, shocking. I know, guys. And I bought the huge dip. Well, it's a mistake in the first place simply because I know absolutely nothing and do not understand the stock or the genomic sector it is in. And I know better than to invest in something I do not understand. I know better than to do that and I did it anyways. As we have discussed many times before for me, now just me guys, I'm not talking about anybody else, this is just me. I personally do not understand the business model, how to project revenues, how certain scenarios affect the business, the approval process, the insurance, and everything else that's involved in all that sector. I cannot accurately predict or understand any of it. That leaves me with that same feeling we have all had of just being at the mercy of Wall Street instead of the power position we like to be in where I own a stock and know exactly what the long-term opportunity is. It's really hard to buy the dip if you don't know if the dip is because Wall Street is being stupid and giving me a great discount on a long-term stock that I'm gonna make a lot of money on, or if there's actually a problem with the business or it's hype trash or whatever. Easy to identify if it's Apple or Google or whatever for me. But with Sarita, I have no freaking clue. So I broke my own rule during the crazy bull market trying to make some quick money basically for fun. And it actually worked out incredibly well during that same time frame with Cloverstock where I tripled my money and then bailed out of my position. That probably honestly added to my stupidity in this situation and made me overconfident. But it didn't go well with this swing trade that has taken me more than a year, almost two actually, to turn green. So it's a swing trade that I sold for a 16% gain in a bear market. That's not too bad in the end, but that still doesn't make it not a mistake and it still doesn't mean I didn't screw up. And I will expand on this further a little bit later on how to ensure you are hedged to still make money even on a mistake. But let's kind of get back on topic here. If I knew what I owned, I could have actually averaged down big time and be up 40 or 50% right now instead of 16% and possibly have a great long-term stock on my hands at an incredible great price. Instead, I'm looking at a stock that I didn't average down on and I have no idea if it's still a bargain or if I should just hold or if it's not just overextended like the current rally would indicate, but grossly overvalued like many stocks were last year. 
I have no clue nor a good way to accurately predict what will happen three to five years from now, which is kind of where my default view is. This is a terrible feeling as an investor and not one that I like at all. I like that I can buy PayPal and know that in three to five years, I bought the stock stupid cheap and will make a lot of money. It makes it very easy to just ignore the noise and not even care about what the stock price does in the meantime. I mean, I really don't care. If you wanna give me shares of PayPal at $69 again, yes, please, I'll happily take it. And if you wanna give me Tesla at 650 again or even lower, uh, I don't have to think there. I can confidently put my money there again and again and again as much as Wall Street wants to play this game. With Sarita, I have no freaking clue and I could not figure it out even if I spent the next two weeks trying to figure it out. So I sold it off, not because I think it's bad, not because a chart said this or that, just simply because I have no freaking clue. But here's the good part. Because of the strategy I employ to begin with, time actually somewhat fixed the mistake for me. That is the secret sauce that every single small investor has over every large investor, every hedge fund, and in Wall Street in general. Time is firmly on our side, and let me explain the specifics because Wall Street and everyone else does not have this luxury. Hedge funds cannot wait out a mistake because the investors won't stand for them holding losers. They have to generate a return now, not next month or next quarter. They want real returns right now. But since I'm a retail investor who only invests for himself, I could afford to wait for a big mistake I made that went down as much as 30 to 45% or whatever the heck it went down, it went down a bunch. I can afford to wait on that. And because I'm only a small investor and I only invest in myself, I could wait for it to turn around and become a gain of 16% in my portfolio before selling instead of taking the big L last year like a hedge fund or a big Wall Street investor would have been forced to do. This is also why I don't do options because you are time constrained which is your biggest advantage as a small investor. Option players cannot wait out a mistake and still make money. Now I'm not saying they're wrong to use or you cannot make money or anything else like that at all but this is just why I choose not to use them because it takes away my biggest advantage. Now to be clear, sometimes you make a mistake and you just need to dump that mistake ASAP. You know, like you bought a hype penny stock that is a decade away from making money if they actually stay in business that long or another mistake like that. That makes sense to me, so you plan out your next move and execute. That makes perfect sense to me and it may be the best move for you. But in my case, I got too fancy and it caused a sour note in my portfolio for almost two years. And yes, even seasoned investors make mistakes, break rules, and are forced to be reminded of that mistake constantly. And to be clear, I earned that reminder. This was 100% on me, so don't be afraid or freak out when you make mistakes. We all make them, it happens to us all, we all make them, and I know I'm gonna make them again, it's just going to happen. Warren Buffett makes them every year, and he has forgotten more than I could ever know about investing. Just take responsibility for the mistake, don't compound it and then plan out what you're going to do next and move on. Saripta could 10X from here and I look dumb for not holding it. And on the flip side, dumping it right now may look brilliant in a year. I don't know, I don't care, and I will probably never look at the ticker symbol again. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, they will happen. Just acknowledge it, own it, and move forward with your investing journey. So hopefully this was helpful. And if you don't know how to get a price target or how to do a valuation and want a step-by-step -step process for doing that, building wealth, and you want direct access to me and much more, remember to check out the pinned comment down below to become a member and at least look at everything you get. And click this video here for the stocks I'm still buying in this market and click here for exactly what I'm doing to make huge money in this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.